What's going on guys? It's Ricky with Tech with Solutions. Thank you guys again for joining us for another live stream and another recap, right, for today's trade. So um, I want to thank you guys for uh, that are joining us. If you guys are joining us for the first time, um, my name is Ricky. I have a group. It's Tech with Solutions. We're a little bit over now, 37,000 members worldwide. And the reason the reason we're growing so quickly is we is we provide a free and simple platform for both new and experienced traders. It's never been more accessible for someone to get exposed to, you know, the, the good the good sides and the bad sides of, you know, the market uh, and learning from people's best practices and making sure that we provo uh, provide a supportive environment for both new and experienced traders. That's simply what it is. The link is down below if you would like to be a part of it. It's the Facebook group, so feel free to be a part of that uh, right now. So this video is really going to consist of um, kind of recapping for today's um like stocks and kind of giving a, a couple traders within our group um, just shout outs for you know their hard work and stuff like that. I just want to give a huge shout out to Connor. He's one of our momentum traders um, and he's one that leads the momentum uh, group chat. So I'm going to be sharing my screen and I want to give him a shout out because he just broke a little bit over 2,000 members. So if you guys want to subscribe to him and don't necessarily find my you know, style of trading, which is more technical, that attractive. I 100% understand. I know that, you know, a lot of people are very successful when it comes to momentum trading. Connor is completely killing it. He has 2,193 subscribers and he started a little bit over about two months ago. Brad is completely killing it, especially with the video that he made with one of his members making over 28,000 members on uh, $20,000 on his first trade. Again, feel free to check these guys out. They're, you know, they're featured within my YouTube channel. And the reason that I'm calling them out um, or trying to promote them is because they're obviously individuals that um, are within our group chat, right? That lead certain subgroups within our group chat and that do a very well job just simply kind of guiding people in the right direction. And if you guys can do me one of the biggest favors and simply just tell them thank you for their hard work. Again, we're doing this all for free. None of us are being compensated. And it's really nice because sometimes, you know, us, uh, we dedicate so much time to this group and, and to our members that we don't necessarily day trade as much as we would like to because we're so focused on the active like management. And I know that's that's something that we give up, but we I think we give it up for the greater good. So I hope you guys understand that. And if you guys can, please give them a thumbs up. If you guys are in the Discord group chat, then if you guys see anyone with a gold or blue lettering, like Dimitri, like Kettle Cooked, um, like Kyle, um, all those guys, their admins or mods within our group chat, please just tell them thank you for their hard work. Again, they're just leading by example, sharing their best practices. And I do want to give a shout out to one um, or a couple of our members real quick. Let me go ahead and shout them out. And some of these are one of their first trades. So this is, um, um, it says MNR SAID. Um, and it says not bad for my first time trading. He was able to lock in a little bit over $157 on his trade today. So huge um, trade for him, right? If it's his first trade, I hope that, you know, you can continue this consistency. And then we want to give a shout out to George Lewis Williams Boza. He's a part of our TechFund Solutions uh, Facebook group member, and he shorted XXII. I called it out. Uh, and again, I'm not saying 100%. I'm not the reason he was successful in this trade. He saw the opportunity. Uh, we simply talked about different stocks in our Sunday Stock Talk, which was two days ago. We saw that XXI was overpriced, way overhyped, and most likely going to see a pullback. And he took advantage of that, was able to make $440 on that single trade. He was, I think, no, he was trying to trade other two stocks. And the thing that I saw very good about the other two stocks is those other two stocks ended up being in the red, but he cut his losses so quick that they were both under $20 for those two trades. So that's one of the most important things. It's not always about having massive profits like he expected with $440, but also understanding the importance of, you know, consistency and keeping losses small and making sure that you lock in profits consistently. And he did an amazing job. So just wanted to give him a quick little shout out and let's kind of get right to it. So let's start recapping about um, maybe 10, 10 to 15 stocks. And then I'll answer a couple of your guys' questions. I'm going to be pretty efficient with this. Um, it's been an extremely busy day for myself. Um, morning was extremely busy and I'll talk about that in just a minute. I just don't want to take too much of your guys' time and let's do this thing guys. So AMD, AMD. AMD. I called it out this morning. I saw that it was a little bit more on the overpriced side. Guys, $13.50 was a previous resistance, and I called that out yesterday when I sold my position. If you guys could see, I had a previous resistance here at $13.50. The reason why that it had a resistance at $13.50, if you guys could see, that was a previous support. Therefore, it becomes a new resistance. It's just a little bit more difficult for it to, you know, be able to break that resistance. It looks like now it's, you know, back at that $13 support, which it was previously at. It did break below $13, so $12.98 during pre-market hour. I mean, after-market hours. 
but it all comes down to how it opens in the morning. We understand that $13 was a previous support, so it did drop below it. So if we can break above it, then $13 can potentially be a good entry, and therefore from $13 back up to $13.50, that leaves us with about you know three to almost 4% potential for profit. So this could be a good stock if it bounces and then starts to show signs of upward momentum by breaking the resistance levels at $13.10, $13.20, $13.30, $13.40, $13.50. And $13 understand and make sure you understand where the support, where the resistance is at. And if you don't, then simply don't trade it again. One of our most important rules is never invest in what you don't understand. But AMD, like no other stock, you know, has consistently showed signs of, you know, consistent trends. And it's very, I think, easy compared to any other stock that we talk about very often to be able to identify the supports, wait for the bounce, and wait for these signs of upward momentum. It just comes down to setting up a plan every single time you trade. And that's why I think that AMD is a good call out for one that potentially has opportunity or potential for profit for tomorrow's trades. Snapchat, again, dropping after it hit that resistance at $14, has been on a consistent downward trend. It looks like it was trying to hold above $13. It looks like it did during pre-market hours, but realistically, um, it, it's just not going to cut it for me. I'm not very interested, especially with a um, earnings um, call that's going to be happening within the next couple of days. I, I just don't want to kind of hold, especially just based on this um, downward trend that it's been seen. Rad, just like we called it out, resistance at um, $2.40. It did break above $2.40 um, like we've seen before, but it doesn't hold very well. Had a pullback back down to the $2.30 support. Tried to hold above $2.30, but broke below it during pre-market hours. Again, not a lot of potential with that one unless it's at the $2.30 support and then it bounces. That one has a pretty common trend of bouncing within $2.30 um, and then hitting a resistance at $2.40, which is actually pretty decent profit if you calculate. It's about 4%. So, I mean, that's huge if you can calculate that. Uh, Cores, which is Michael course um, had a great earnings call or great earnings report and that's why it had such a huge um, movement up right it was a catalyst but understand that the catalyst um, just is more exposure for the stock and that's why the demand increased understand that this demand or this hype for the specific stock will most likely die out and then that's when we're going to see the pullbacks and then in those pullbacks we'll most likely see it um, I mean course has consistently been um, if I'm not mistaken um, just held Kind of consistently so i'm thinking due to this like kind of over hype um you can see that it's more on the overbought side we're going to see a pullback so this might be potentially something uh, for someone that wants to short a stock if they see the potential in this one um for those that you know once it starts breaking all the supports then this this could potentially be a good one to keep an eye out uh, once it starts breaking below you know 45 and then 44 and then because of this huge margin that it gapped back up then you know that could be a huge margin when it gaps back down plug the reason that i want to call this one out is due to the support that it's previously had at $12. I mean, at $2, I apologize. Whoa. Okay. If you guys could see, it previously had the support at $2.20, and then it has another support here at $2.10. It looks like it's trying to hold during pre-market hours or after-market hours at $2.10. So this could potentially be a good play. But understand that you know it is on a downward trend from its peak that it had at 240, which is its previous peak. But just know that that was a previous support. So simply wait for the bounce, and then if it starts to trend back up, you know just if you see potential in it, then set up a plan that will lead to your success. DNR, DNR, we actually called this one out today, um, or we called it out I think two days ago, and it played out exactly. Or in our recap, we called it out, and then today it played out exactly, if not better, the way that we expected. They had an earnings call, and I said this can kind of either make it or break it. The reason I said that um, was if you do a five-day analysis, it had a pretty solid support at one dollar and thirty cents. It bounced at one dollar and thirty cents here, here. And then once it was coming back down, I was like, okay, well, one thought one dollar and thirty cents was most likely going to be the support if it, you know, the earnings call was, you know, went well. And it really did um, ended up holding above um, one dollar and thirty cents. And um, that's what actually led to this catalyst all the way back up to this one dollar and forty cent resistance. Um, and then almost ended up hitting highs, well hit the same highs that it previously did at one dollar and forty eight cents. But again, it's most likely going to start seeing a downward trend uh, back to this 130 support. Now SQ, SQ was one that we called out um, once it broke above uh, 2580, which is a, which was a resistance for three days in a row. Broke above that and then had a little run today. Held above 26, which is good. It's showing signs of upward momentum and hopefully making its way back up to its 26 to 27 dollar resistance um, or old support that it previously had. Let's go ahead and move on to AAOI. Um, this one has been trying to hold. If you guys could see the old margin that it had. 
um, at $70 to 75. And if you can see now it's trying to hold around that area from $70 to 75. If you could see that how it played out today, highs of like almost 75, lows of about, you know, 60, or I mean 70. Um, so we're going to need to wait for this to start showing signs of upward momentum again. And then therefore this ma margin um, will become valid as well. So um, Gail, I don't really like it. Um, had a huge drop support at 40 cents. Might be nice for those that like trading stocks less than $1. That's personally not my style. Um, MEET, again, broke below the $4 support. So therefore, until it breaks above $4, I've traded this one consistently for two days, thinking that it was going to have potential um, to bounce back up. The volume was not there. The demand was not there. It continued to break every single support. Um, and therefore, that's why I continue to cut my losses. I, you know, it wasn't huge. I'm still swinging a couple stocks. Um, but yeah, it just hasn't been playing out the way that I wanted it to. Um, a, a, um, a R R Y has been on a consistent downward trend from its peak um, at $8 and 20 cents. Now let's go ahead and see. Okay. Well, previous support, we can see here Dick's sporting goods, um, previous support at 37 margin to 38. So if you think that that potential is worth it, that's about a 2.71% potential. Again, this is by Dick sporting goods. So, you know, definitely not a penny stock, um, RSI indicator, all that criteria looks like it's being met. Um, but we really need to wait for the bounce. It looks like it is trying to bounce already. Um, once it goes above 37, but, um, not 100%, right? Nothing's hundred percent, but it definitely looks like once the EMA line crosses the candlestick and it starts to indicate signs of upward momentum, then that might be a good one that for those that like to swing trade, um, might want to keep your eyes on this one. Now, uh, G U S H. Um, the reason that I'm calling this one out is, um, one of my buddies, John called this specific stock out because if we look at a, let's do a one year analysis. Um, I guess you're not even going to be able to see it. I guess it's a little bit further than one year. Um, but let's go a little bit closer. And based on previous supports, it's been at around seven, uh, six, $17.60, had highs of about 19, and then had a pullback again. Bounce at around that 1760 support. And once it breaks above $18, then it has this margin again of almost up to 19. So understanding that, then you have a 5.31% potential for profit, and then your overall support. So again, just making sure that you understand what it is that you're investing in. So support at about 1760. Resistance at about eighteen to uh, nineteen dollars. Therefore, you know the potential for profit if you can manage that right. If you can get in there at around seventeen um, or eighteen dollars, that's five point three one. When your potential for loss, if you cut losses, if it goes below um, seventeen sixty, your potential for loss is about two percent. John did a really good job of getting in at like seventeen eighty, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it comes down to like you know only investing in stocks that you see value in. If you see that this is a common trend and if you see that this is something that can play out the way that you plan it to, then make sure you go into it, but make sure that you manage your risk. Um, and that's one of the most important things. So K, Kellogg's, um, huge red day for it today. Um, I mean, I think in my opinion, right? It doesn't move around as much as, as those that would want to day trade it um, would think, uh, but just thought I'd call that out. Now, let me go ahead and um, talk about JDST. Th these are the ones that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and this is kind of what I'm going to um, be um, talking about for today's video. So if you guys see the title, and I'm doing the recaps and that's why I'm going down the list. But I'm saying, you know, how to make a profit on earning calls. If it's, it's no like surprise that a bunch of these stocks after the earning calls, which it's been nonstop this week, we've been doing a very good job day trading these stocks and i want you guys to understand one thing you guys need to understand where when the earning calls are going to happen because some of you guys have or, or make the mistake of right before you know you guys day trade it it doesn't play out the way that you wanted it to or you ran out of day trades and then there's an earning earnings call right after the market opens and therefore most of these stocks are low cap stocks end up missing you know their expectation by certain percentages and then have a huge drop. Therefore, not only did you break your rule because you didn't day trade it and stick to your plan, but then now you're losing an enormous amount of money because you bought in right before the earning reports and a majority of these stocks don't necessarily hit their their you know expected um, or expected type of like target. So understand that like what I mean on how to make a profit on earning reports is because they drop so much after these earning calls um, because of you know people overselling them or, or being like, you know, just, just scared of what's going to happen. A lot of these stocks end up being oversold. I'm going to give you guys, I think, pretty good examples of this. And usually what we do within our group is we wait for the pullbacks. We wait for it to identify its support. And once it starts climbing up, especially on the first day, that's when it starts climbing up. And then that's why when, that's when it builds that margin of profit. The other two days, you know, the, the hype, 
dies out and the demand dies out. Therefore, they don't move as much. Therefore, the demand or the opportunity might not be as great. But I think this could be great exposure. Not even those that are trading low cap stocks, but those that are just getting started, even try this with your simulation trading or paper trading. Make sure you only invest in what you understand. And therefore, once you see these pullbacks, wait for it to kind of flatline or plateau. And once it starts climbing back up, identify the support, the resistance, where you would like to buy and sell and manage your risk. What makes sense to you that your potential for profit is greater than your potential for loss and that you could day trade it. Again, you don't really want to hold these stocks, um, especially right after the earnings report. So I'm going to give you guys an example of this and then kind of go from there. So let's go ahead and go down the list. Oh. Okay, well, red is like kind of like the complete opposite. That ended up doing very well. So again, it gapped up. But understand, I mean, this is micro cores, so obviously not every stock is going to be like that. But let's take uh, PLUG for an example. It dropped so much that once it set its support during um, during pre market hours, it set it at about two dollars and twenty cents. Not only did it gap up from two twenty um, to about two thirty once, which is about four percent. So for a day trade, that's huge, you guys. Especially if you're trading with like you know two to three thousand dollars, you guys have to do the math on how much you know that actually is. But it did it twice. Again, it bounced and held above the support at two dollars and twenty cents. Which if you joined us for our live stream, I called it out. And therefore, it bounced again at 220 and then ended up hitting highs of 230 and even breaking it. But again, it ended up hitting almost exactly uh, the previous peak where I ended up um, right, right when the market opened. So therefore, I had two opportunities to be able to make about 5% profit per trade. And then after that, you know, you could have waited again at 220. But, you know, if you would have gotten in this time and it broke below 220, you could have cut your losses. You would have been two for three today, right? You would have cut your losses very quickly and you would have locked in profits twice because it made sense to you. And understand that it has huge pullbacks. It builds this margin of profit. If it bounces correctly and starts to break resistance, it starts to hold above that support. And then that, that's really just it. Let's see if we can find another one. So after it's earnings reports, let me go a little bit further back. I think this one was actually one of those trades. Yeah. Um, so Square, again, this is a multi-billion dollar company and this one played out exactly the way that we wanted it to. Um, it had an earnings call, saw a drop, built its support at $25. I know that we called this one out right when it had its earnings reports, had a pullback. We identified the support at $25. And then we identified the resistance at 25.80. And guys, we've been trading it every single day. Um, and it's been nonstop, but not until today did it break above 20, uh, $25.80 and it started trading above that margin. So again, understand the importance of, um, and I know a lot of you guys are exposed to this, but um, I know some of you guys aren't. Because of these earning reports and because a lot of people are overselling these stocks because it didn't meet you know, the expectations, a lot of people are trading based on fundamentals. Understand that my style of trading, I'm not saying that your style, I'm just saying my style of trading aren't necessarily based on fundamentals. It's always good to know the most you can about the stocks that you're trading, and I 100% support that. But when it comes down to these stocks that I'm day trading, all I look for as my style of trading is more technical. Support, resistance, waiting for the pullback, waiting for it to break above you know, um, or, or bounce at the support. And then once it starts showing signs of upward momentum, then I can make a simple analysis that, look, it's starting to climb back up to you know, its old support, which is going to be its new resistance. Therefore, it built this margin for profit, and I simply have to buy low and sell high. It's, it's a very simple concept, but it comes down to having to be very disciplined, at least with my own experience. Being able to cut losses if it breaks below support, just cut losses, move on to the next one. But because a lot of these earning reports have huge pullbacks, what you do is you wait for it to settle down, you wait for it to start climbing back up, and then you know you identify a point where you're going to cut your losses if it breaks below it, and then you identify a realistic sell point. But it's that simple. Um, but again, make sure that you only trade stocks that you see value in, and make sure that you have a plan every single time when it comes to trading, making sure that your potential for profit is much greater than your potential for loss. A very common stock or ETF that's been thrown around within the group because of my call out um, has been JNUG and JDST. The reason people are calling this out is because of the news of President Trump and with North Korea. So understand that, you know, that's more of a fundamental analysis or fundamental understanding of, you know, what's actually, you know, acting as a catalyst for a lot of these gold based ETFs. Since usually, you know, when our economy does well, um, you know, JDST is usually the one that ends up moving up. And then when our economy does bad, you know, being the inverse ETF, JNUG is the one that actually ends up rising while JDST drops. Understand that at the market close today, JDST saw a drop and JNUG started to rise. 
It's no surprise that that's something that I called out uh, for one of the top stocks or ETFs for this month. And the reason why was because JNUG is at its support. Within you know doing a simple analysis, you see that it usually holds above fifteen to sixteen dollars, and its resistance is around anywhere from nineteen to twenty dollars. Therefore, JNUG is more at its prime; it has more potential for profit. It doesn't mean that it's going to do you know one hundred percent of what we expect it to do, but with a proper plan on managing your risk, then the risk might be worth it. And it's as simple as that. Um, JNUG shows more potential, in my opinion, right now than JDST because JDST is more added to resistance, especially with all the news that's going on with President Trump. That's not that's not like great news for our economy. Therefore, JDST goes down when our economy goes down, and JNUG goes up when our economy goes down because it's the inverse ETF. But other than that, um, that's really what I wanted to break down for you guys. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, so now I'm actually starting to read all the live chats. If you guys um, could could tell, I wasn't reading any of the live chats, but um, that, that's really just it. So I hope you guys found this recap um, helpful. So if you guys want to start throwing in comments, I'm going to dedicate two minutes to answering some of your guys' questions. We'll end the live stream there. Um, and I do want to give you guys or let you guys know that I jumped on two um, consult, uh, consultation calls today. So I want to thank those guys that signed up this morning. I had a very small time frame and they all got booked. I do have some time tomorrow. I think I have a space for one more tomorrow in the morning. Um, and it's going to be from around I think 8.30 to 10.30, I have a two hour gap. If you guys did not notice, um, I did end up changing the prices. And the reason that I changed the prices was that um, there's a couple people that messaged me that really wanted to jump on calls with me, but didn't necessarily have the money. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to do it up as a per minute basis, meaning that the link is gonna be down below if for those that want to jump on this call. You guys 100% don't have to, but if you guys want to do one-on-one -on -one video calls, uh, a quick pitch, that's what I'm calling it, 15 minutes for $15. Half hour consultation, thirty dollars for thirty minutes. One hour consultation, sixty dollars for you know sixty minutes. And then a power group consultation. What that means, it's going to be one hour, and it's going to be once a week, and it's going to be on Sundays after our Sunday stock talk. And I'm only going to allow ten people within that. I'm giving it for twenty five dollars for an hour consultation, just because I have more people in there, and it's going to allow me to have a more like you know real experience and, and answer individual questions. So for those that see value in that, great. Feel free to join. I did lower the prices because I want it to be accessible for everyone. Um, if the demand starts to grow too high and I start getting people that aren't necessarily there um, for the best interest, because I know the prices aren't high and I know people are charging or I could be charging a lot more, but just understand that if you guys do the math with you know how many hours I'm only going to be dedicating a day for this and with, I don't, I don't want to say that it's not a lot of money, but realistically with what it is that I make, I, I'm doing this more for like, I hope to capture um, and, and kind of be able to network with people with good ideas so I can fund their ideas um, and being able to answer, you know, questions that um, people are, you know, really just trying to get answered. And I feel like the numbers that I give out are pretty uh, reasonable and I'm only going to be doing it about maybe two to three hours a day um, within my schedule. So um, feel free to check it out. If you guys see value in it, great. If you guys don't, then I 100% understand. I will continuously still be uploading uh, my two free um, videos on YouTube. So that's, that's really just it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start answering a couple of your guys' questions and let's go from there. All right, so Tyler's saying, can you talk about the potential stock market scare due to the talk about war from Trump? Uh, should we be cautious? Understand, guys, that um, when it comes down to, and I guess this isn't the best time for me to talk, be talking about this, but I'm a day trader. I never really have any of my actual capital invested, you know, 100% in a stock. Right now, I am still swing trading uh, SAVE, so I have $3,500. Um, it just has to come down to, you know, your style of trading. For a lot of those that are swing trading, and you guys hear all this news based on fundamental that, you know, it might not be the best time to hold the stock, you know, you want to be at least exposed to that understanding that, you know, it might not actually be the best time for you to be holding a stock right now. Uh, therefore, you know, the risk could be a little bit greater, right? As, as well as the reward, right? Because if something good happens, then your stock can, you know, drastically increase. Understand that as a day trader, I'm not necessarily affected as much. Um, and I can simply, um, you know, switch on over to shorting stocks and then I can um, be able to, you know, make a profit that way. But that's not a huge problem for me. Um, so, yeah. All righty, let's go ahead and see. Sam, 
Seth B, uh, Miss saying, Ricky, post take forever to get approved. I actually added a couple more admins within our Facebook group. I do apologize that um, you're having a bad experience. I will add a couple more uh, just to make it a little bit more efficient. But understanding that if you want to get something answered um, as quick as possible, we have the Discord group chat, and that's on the top pinned post of the Facebook group. And there's an actual um, like subgroup that's to answer questions. And someone's always answering the questions there. So feel free to move on over there and then uh, go on from there. Do you know how much, um, what, how much do you and Connor bench press? I don't know what, um, I, I don't know what that has to do with trading, but invest in my record label, Ricky. Um, that's, that's not my niche for investing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you kickbacks. I, 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 I bet it's amazing. Discord is very instant. That's by Shalom Williams. She's saying, I love it. Thank you again. Are you ever going to hold a TechBuds meetup? Um, I, I really do believe that I'm going to be holding a TechBuds meetup very soon. Let's give a shout out to Dimitri. What's going on, bud? I just got into Ustock um, or Ustock Trade. Um, do you recommend that platform? I, I've heard a lot of people use it. I think Connor is one of our um, momentum traders and he's one that uses that or made a review on that specific brokerage company. Understand that if it works for you, that's great. It doesn't have to work for me or I don't necessarily have to like it. I use Fidelity to execute my trades and I use TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim platform to analyze. That's not the most you know common type of approach that someone takes, but it works for me and that's what I'm going to do. So uh, CP is saying in your Discord, is your Discord room full? Um, I can't get an entry. It's not full. Um, feel free to, again, it's on the top pinned post. You should be able to get accepted. Okay, so I'm going to end it here because it, it's something that I get asked so um, common. Um, understand that I am working on a lesson library for all those that are saying like, hey, Ricky, where do I get started? Um, you know, I've made so many videos on YouTube and you guys simply have to go on the YouTube search bar and search up the questions that you guys want me to answer because I'm sure that I've made a video on it. I am working on a lesson library that will explain everything it is that I know about the stock market and what has led to my success with my own strat like with my own um, like best practices and my own like approach to the market. So I am going to be making that specific lesson library and it should be available within one week. And I go through the complete basics of trading all the way to actually, you know, um, like capturing myself trade and stuff like that and it's something that I haven't done before but just know that it is gonna it is going to be available so I do want to let you guys know um, just give me some time and then I should be putting that out there for the meanwhile I would suggest for those that are just getting started to start paper trading so it's simulation trading um, and I would suggest TD Ameritrade um, and then when it comes down to you know how to get started just do your own research like there's so many videos and so much content out there it really comes down to you doing your own research um, and, and seeing what works best for you because just because it works for me doesn't mean that it's going to be the perfect picture for you either Ricky it seems like you try different time frames trying to find the perfect supports of stocks would this be true um, it depends all right, this is going to be the last question. So that, that's a good question. So for those that are trying to find support and resistance levels, understand how it. What's your approach on that specific stock? If you're thinking about day trading it, then you shouldn't be looking at you know um, one month analysis, right? Because if you're thinking about day trading it, then you should realistically be seeing at the margins that the stock moves within one day um, or within a couple minutes. So understanding that, you should maybe just be going to one day frequencies or two day frequencies to see how it's been played out within the past you know 24 um, to 48 hours. Understanding that. Um, the frequencies that I like to take are either one minute uh, to five minute candlesticks, depending on the margin of the specific stock itself. So if you're swing trading a stock, then you might have to look at, you know, one month analysis if you plan on holding that stock for about one month. The reason or the approach that I take there is how do you expect a, to day trade a stock from, let's say, $1 to $2 if it hasn't gone from $1 to $2 all in one day? It usually takes maybe, you know, an entire month for it to make that gap. How would you expect to day trade it? It's not realistic. Understanding that, then that's why, you know, you have to 
cut that frequency to maybe you know two to one day frequency therefore you could see that it goes from one dollar to one dollar and ten cents as ten percent potential the profit might be worth it um, and it just comes down to you formulating a plan that's realistic within one day so it's not just about identifying a support and resistance um, but making sure that it's realistically able to happen all within one day um, or with a time frame that you're thinking about day trading it or swing trading it and stuff like that so that's really just it so thank you guys again so much for watching i hope you guys found this video helpful and again if you guys have time or want to jump into one of those calls with me the link will be down below if you guys uh, would like to jump on that i believe i still have um one i think I think I said two, but I have one um, opening in the morning. Um, so feel free to join that if you guys would like to. And if not, we will see you guys um, at Market Open at 6 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time or Mountain Standard Time, whatever it is that you guys want to say, um, and which is 30 minutes before the market opens, so during pre-market hours. We'll catch you guys there. Continue doing what it is that you guys love. Continue working hard and everything it is that you guys can uh, continue to pursue. And like always, guys, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care, guys. Peace.